special and monumental because we are finally beginning our backyard garden. If you've been following along, you know this is something that has just been a really charming notion and daydream in my life. I have just really hoped to have a backyard garden someday, so it really feels so special and I'm so thankful that we get to begin it today together. So we have a bit of a plan. I am such a novice at this whole thing. I am trying to soak up as much knowledge and information as I can, but I know in my heart that it's just gonna be a process of trying, making mistakes, learning, and growing. I will be using garden puns throughout this video, so there's your warning, but I'm really just so excited. As you can tell, I am beaming. Let me put down my coffee and show you what we've got so far. Okay, so one thing, I read through this book last night. It was incredibly insightful because we will be using raised beds in our garden. I have four in the back. I'll show you in a second. And then I also started a little garden diary notebook journal, which was actually one of the recommendations that Tammy, the author, made. So essentially what this is going to be used for is keeping track of what we plant and how it produces, how it harvests. If it doesn't have any luck, then maybe we should try something else next time. So it's really just keeping track so you can learn throughout the seasons and throughout the years. But I did a little sketch of the layout and the different produce I would like to plant. And then I wrote some friendly reminders that I'll share throughout this video. And the last thing is just some items that I would hope to grow. So we're going to take a little field trip to the garden center later today and we'll pick out some goodies. But again, really just so ex excited and thankful to be beginning this journey together. This has been my soundtrack of the morning so far, Patrick Doyle Radio. I absolutely love his work. He's a really talented composer and he wrote a lot of the music for the Cinderella live action and then also Sense and Sensibility, a Jane Austen movie. And I like the radio because there's also some tracks from Pride and Prejudice and some of my other favorite films. So if you want to feel some whimsical and just dreamy energy, I definitely suggest playing this playlist. I put my garden apron on. I ordered this from Amazon. It is so cute and incredibly practical because there's so many pockets. So we have one up here um, and then it has these little mini pockets right here. So you could put little tools or maybe even a couple. Oh wait, let's see. Okay, this, oh, never mind. They don't have bottoms on them. So you can just put maybe some pencils or tools or little garden stakes, whatever it may be. And then on this side, you have a pocket with a little velcro so if you need something to be a little bit more secure you can put it in there and then we have a big pocket down here so I think that'll be very nice and then I have my garden gloves that I've had for quite some time hopefully they don't get holes in them anytime soon because they are looking like they've seen better days but definitely putting them to work today and there's a few things that I'd like to discuss the first one is compost. Again, I'm a novice to gardening and I'm a novice to composting. My grandparents are compost experts, so I'm gonna need to have like a workshop with them because they have a huge compost uh, container in their backyard. But for the meantime, in the interim, I just want to start somewhere and I'm just going to use my <laughs> little mix match compost. Essentially, I've just kept this jar over the last couple of days and anytime we have scraps that are suitable for the garden, I just pop them in this jar. So in here, it looks very appetizing, doesn't it? <laughs> we have eggshells, we have coffee grounds, we have banana peels cut up, we have avocado peels cut up, we have apple core. So yeah, it's just a hodgepodge of <laughs> nutrients. So essentially what I've been doing is whenever I have a scrap, I just Google real quick, is so-and-so safe for a garden? And if yes, then I pop it in here and hope for the best. And I believe there's a lot of different advice when it comes to composting with how much it should be decomposed, decayed, and also, some plants need more of a certain mineral or vitamin than other plants and seedlings. So there is a lot that goes into it, but since I'm just starting, I just want to start somewhere and let's just hope this adds some beneficial nutrients. And if anything, I just hope it won't be harmful. And since I only have this jar for 
all four beds. I'm gonna spread it out quite a bit so it won't be too concentrated in one area. And we'll probably buy a bag of compost from the garden center as well. So that's my little spiel, but something that the author of the book I read last night was really harping on was soil quality. You really want to have soil that is thriving and that will be able to sustain your plants for years and years to come. And also there are requirements with planting certain produce in the same spot year after year. There's a lot of little tidbits that, you know, you wouldn't think of until you start doing it. So I'm, again, learning a lot, but I'm excited to start with this little compost jar. Yesterday, I spent the day building the garden beds and it went really well. Thankfully, it wasn't too complicated or anything and they seem very secure and sturdy. So hopefully they'll last us for many, many years to come. Also, I ordered them from Amazon, so everything will be linked in the description in case you're hoping to start a garden for yourself. But I love these raised beds because they're great ergonomically so that you're not leaning over and bending over backwards every time you're out tending to it. And then I also love it because if we do need to move them at some point, you totally can do that. They will be heavy once you have all the soil and whatnot in them, but they definitely are transportable and they're also a great option if you live in an apartment and have a balcony. You could absolutely put one in a smaller space. So I really love how versatile they are and they seem like a great size and they have a few different holes on the bottom for drainage. So that's great. Also a fun idea would be to stain them if you want a little different wood color or you could even paint them. I thought about painting them light blue, but I really do like just the simple wood look of it all. Let's go ahead and line them up in the backyard and then I'm also going to lay out the little stepping stones we purchased. It'll be really nice to have this walkway and it works out with our fence structure and layout as well because that'll just lead you to the back gate. this it is actually recommended to pull out the grass before you put in the pavers but you know I just don't have that in me I want to just <laughs> leave the grass and thankfully it's not too wobbly so I'm thinking it'll be okay but if it were a bit more uneven it would be better to level out the ground and take out the grass but I'm feeling pretty good that they'll be able to go ahead and um, stay put and the grass won't break them but I guess we'll see but if it were wobbly, it wouldn't be too much trouble to take off the grass, but we'll just leave it for now. I'm already seeing two butterflies today, so that's encouraging and just always a delight to see. I definitely want to cultivate a environment that the butterflies thrive in and the pollinators. We definitely want those in our garden. So, I'm going to make sure my list for the nursery contains some butterfly favorites like milkweed. I definitely want to look for that. And I was reading about butterflies and creating a butterfly garden and some key points that I read that are really important to attracting them is having some sort of water source that's running, not still water because apparently that attracts the mosquitoes which we are very familiar with in Florida. So you want some kind of running water because they need a water source and then they also like salt so you can put a little puddle with some salt and then as the water evaporates they'll come and soak up some of those nutrients from the salt and apparently that's important for them i'm still learning the ins and outs of all of that but again definitely want to attract those beautiful butterflies so we'll see what we can find at the nursery but i'm just going to go ahead and finalize my list of things I want to grab while we're at the garden center and then we'll head over there soon.
are back home from the nurseries. I ended up going to three different nurseries because, well, one, I was looking for more flowers that were already in bloom that I could add to the flower bed, but I didn't really find any I super, super loved. We grabbed a few, so I'll show you, but I guess we'll just have to plant the ones we want from seeds. Also, I showed this in a vlog recently, but I have my little germination station is what I like to call it. And I have two things of lettuce here and then one zinnia. Nothing has, has sprouted yet. It's only, been, oh, <laughs> it's only been about three days. So on the seed packet, it said five to seven days. So hopefully we'll see some action soon. But in the garden book I was reading last night, pretty much everything I read said you can just plant the seed for, especially for lettuce, like it's good to just plant the seed in the bed, directly in the bed, instead of using one of these starter pots. So it's probably a little unnecessary, but we're experimenting, we're trying everything. So at the first garden center, I purchased quite a few packs of soil, which, oh my goodness, <laughs> my arms are gonna be sore from lugging those packs of soil. I have about 10 in total. 10 or 11 and I, I'm still not totally sure if that'll be enough to fill them all. We'll see. We will see. And then I bought jalapenos, bell peppers, lots of different herbs that were already in bloom or already more mature. So we're not gonna plant those from seed, but we will plant rainbow carrots from seed. I'm really excited about these. I love rainbow carrots. And I am a little late um, when it comes to planting these because you were the cutoff in all the guides was March and it is the second week of April. So I am a little late, but hopefully it won't be a big deal. And something to note is when you are gardening and planting things, you want to think about your harvest time. So if you plant all of your rows at once, your harvest is going to be very bountiful, but it's, it's wise a lot of times to space out your harvest or space out your planting so plant half of what you want one week and then the next week plant all the rest of the seeds that way it spaces out the harvest times if that makes sense um but since this is all new for me i'm just going to go ahead and plant to fill my beds and we'll kind of see how it goes see if anything even comes into fruition so that's the plan i will say Every time I go into the garden centers, I am a bit intimidated by it all and get a little overwhelmed, but as time goes on, I'll just feel more and more comfortable. So that's what I'm holding on to. But like I said, got the rainbow carrot mix and then we have our, not, yeah, I guess you could call it a mix. Yeah, rainbow carrot mix. Then we have our kale and this is the dwarf blue curled kale. And then we have lacinato kale and then we have some lettuce mix. This is the, what kind? This is the Black Seeded Simpson mix. And I've decided to plant in rows, so we'll have to use some markers so we can get those accurate rows once we start planting. And then I got some sunflower seeds for our flower bed. And then I have this wildflower mix that I've just had for a little bit now. So I'm gonna go ahead and plant these as well in the flower bed. So that's kind of the plan. Oh, and I also did get lavender and chamomile. So I'm debating if I should put the chamomile in the herb bed or the flower bed. I just adore chamomile when it's in bloom. They're so sweet. And I will try chamomile tea, but I'm also hoping to use the flowers for baking. Since they're edible, you can put them on cakes and cupcakes and bread. I could even put it on a sourdough loaf. That'd be really cute. So we'll see, but I'm gonna just reconvene. I cut up a grapefruit to munch on for a bit of fuel and then I'm gonna make an ice latte soon and we're gonna start planting everything.
gardening tips and reminders that I'm going to try to keep in mind is that it is best to underwater instead of overwater. This one's going to be tricky for me because, well one, it rains so much in Florida, but two, it's also so warm and hot, so I just always feel like my plants are probably thirsty, so I'm going to need to resist the urge to water them all the time. And then another tip, watering is best done in the early morning so that the plants have the full day to soak it up and drain the water. And instead of watering every single day, it's better to do a deep watering every couple of days to encourage a strong root system because the roots will start to search for the water and that helps strengthen your plants. The beds have been filled with soil. Thankfully, I bought just enough to fill all four of them. And I tried to create some sort of mound as I was filling them because I read that's, you know, a preferred thing to do. So tried to make it a little taller in the center so that you has a little bit of a slope. And now I'm just gonna go ahead and mix in my DIY compost and then we'll start planting. Okay, we are making great progress. I did the easier part of planting the plants that are already established. Now it's time to plant our seeds. So, like I mentioned, I wanna do some sunflowers and wildflowers in our flower bed, which is already quite full. And then I wanna do kale and spinach, or I didn't get spinach, kale and lettuce in the bed in the corner over there and that one doesn't have anything in it yet so it's going to be all seeds so that'll be really cool to see that grow and establish and then carrots how much do these need to be spaced out eight eight to ten inch root um it doesn't say how much this needs to be spaced out so i'm going to need to do some research myself so I think I'm going to try to plant them with the peppers, but I honestly don't have that much room so I might try to do some with the herbs because I have quite a bit of room in the herb bed. So I don't know, we're really just <laughs> trial and error, but another thing I want to do after we plant the seeds is make DIY plant labels. Let me show you what we currently have. So these are the little labels that they came with and I just put them in the soil for now because I don't want to forget the different names but I bought these little copper labels that we'll make um, DIY tags with. So we'll do that soon but first let's plant our little seeds. Here's what the sunflower seeds look like. They're so cute.
everything has been planted. I did struggle a little bit. Something to know about me, I am not a super precise person, but I did try my best to obey the spacing suggestion on the seed packets, but I definitely eyeballed most of them. So hopefully that isn't detrimental, but I need to figure out some kind of filing, seed filing, I'm sure. Some of you will have some good ideas because I want to make sure I don't lose these seeds and take care of them. So now I'm just heating up some lentil soup so that I can have some fuel for our little DIY. Okay, so I have these copper tags for plants and I think they'll look really beautiful as they age. They'll sort of patina and get that pretty character. And I'm going to take these metal stamps to add in all the plant names. Okay, time to show Brandon and Palmer the garden. I'm really excited for them to see it. Ta-da, there it is. <laughs> yeah, we have everything we need for a yummy dinner. <laughs> Isn't it cute? So cute. I need to work on doing some more tags, but... Yeah, this is the herb box. And then we have carrot seeds back there, rainbow carrots. This is bit basil. Yeah, this is basil, basil, this is basil, cilantro. that's Italian parsley, oh, uh, flat Italian parsley, cilantro. rosemary, cilantro. Yep. Cool. And then this is our flower box. So we have different that? daisies. Those are chamomile. And then we have sunflower seeds. Do they and... look prettier at some point? <laughs> yeah, they do look prettier at some do, point. Is that that? No, oh. those are cosmos. Okay. And then over here is... <laughs> The most beautiful like box. <laughs> it's very simple. Yeah, very simple. Very and then these are our peppers. So we have jalapeno peppers, oh. red bell. We have Anaheim hot peppers. So it's going to be spicy. Very spicy, cool. spicy. You love it? Anaheim hot peppers. Yeah, I'm excited for that. <laughs> yeah. What a day. I'm ready to take a nice long shower. That's going to feel so good. Today was so much fun and it really feels like a dream come true to have a garden and begin the journey it definitely was physically very tiring so i'm gonna sleep good tonight but again just really thankful to start our garden together and hopefully i'll have updates for you in the next video and we can see how things progress and grow i'll need to write down some notes in my little journal i showed you earlier tonight so that we can keep track of everything. Also, the little tags I was playing, I was making the copper tags. I'm gonna need to make more of them, but I was just kind of feeling it out because it was my first time using the metal stamp. So I need to perfect my <laughs> stamping a little bit more. It does require a little finesse because the tags are more on the thin side. So I'm going to do that another day, but I am calling it a night. Thank you guys so much for spending the day with me and embarking on this garden journey alongside me. I love and appreciate you all so much. And if you are a seasoned gardener, I would love any advice and tips that you have to share. But again, super grateful for you all and cannot wait to see you soon. Bye.